on a daily basis, uh, we delegate to the staff. When we come in the morning, we do our prayer and we do our allocation. Like mainly with the registered nurses, we um, supervise the staff. We are also allocated to duties. So most of the times we have like three um, registered nurses. One is allocated to injections, one sister is in high care, and then one sister is allocated to tiny tots. Mm. And the HB, was it repeated today? No. 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 Maybe tomorrow. Was transferred last night? Stenger Hospital is the only regional hospital. And under us, we've got three district hospitals. So they are all the critical ill babies, they are sent to us. So it means that we must also have capacity to take care of, take care of those babies. And at times, there is a need to transfer the critically ill ones. They need to be transferred to tertiary hospital, which is in Gos Albert. And if they don't have a bed at Ingos Albert, there's nothing that we have to do. We have to keep that child. So we must have that capacity. So staffing is really a challenge. In terms of the nursing staff, we're short in terms of the nursing staff, especially the professional nurses. We don't have enough professional nurses. We don't have enough enrolled nurses, but we are using what we have. How can we get more staff? <laughs> it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. We do have posts, but there must be money. Because if you employ a person, you must, that person must be permanent, must always be paid. It's a contract. It, it, must, it must always be paid. You cannot say that. The government cannot say that we don't have money this month. So they must have enough budget before they can employ a person. So I really don't know how can we improve that one. Um, I don't think it's great. Uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's great. I think we are working on it. Um, but especially the smaller hospitals, uh, they, they, they struggle. It's not easy to find uh, uh, good, strong leaders. We are one of the most unequal societies in the, in the, in the world. And in healthcare, that is very clearly visible. So if you look at the resources, the money that we spend as a country on healthcare is very much in line with other countries in the world. So about 10% 10, 10 of our income are the money that we have in the country we spend on health. So that is, that is great. So you would expect that we would run proper uh, healthcare services. The problem is that 80% of the money goes to 20% of the wealthy people, and the remaining 20% of the money goes to 80% of the remaining people. So there's a huge mismatch, and that is not, that is not sustainable. The whole the NHR, what they're trying to do is try to bring those systems together and bring back some equality and redistribute distribute those resources. So in principle, I can only be very excited about it. So often our patients are primary malnutrition. So malnutrition is a child who's not getting the correct nutrition. 
So there's two extremes of it. We see undernutrition and we see overnutrition, such as obesity. Undernutrition, there's different forms, such as wasting, stunting, severe and moderate acute malnutrition. And that's what we see predominantly in this district. So there's quite a few short-term effects. Um, some of those include a breakdown of all your systems. So a child who's not getting the correct nutrients and they can't grow, and that stands for every system in their body. So their immune systems don't work well. They're predisposed to all kinds of infections. It affects their cardiovascular system. So don't forget the heart is a muscle, just like the muscles in our um, arms and legs. So as the child becomes wasted, so the heart becomes wasted. This is a prim baby, so we give them three hourly feeds and babies due for the feed now, so I'm just feeding a normal feed. A mom is unable to come. Normally the mothers come and they feed the kids, mm -hmm. but a mom is admitted she's unwell. What are some of the best moments? Best moments? Being with these kids. Most of them don't have moms. Most of them come from you know, the rural areas, underprivileged children. It's such a pleasure nursing all of them. Especially on neonatal care, we struggle in South Africa. We have achieved a lot when it comes to mortality rates in, in, in children under five years old. Mm -hmm. But with the newborns, we still struggle to get the mortality rates down. So we still have a lot of babies that are born too early or too sick. Uh, that, is, that is a bit of a frustration, to be honest. Uh, we have not been that successful. And the main thing is, and, and, and we struggle to understand why, it's something that we picked up last year, is that um, we're getting more and more babies that are born below a kilo. So more and more extreme low birth weight, extreme premature babies. Oh, kangaroo mother care, it's whereby they first teach you how to take care of the baby because usually you come here for growing, to grow up your child because it's a prim. So, the, well, the things that they teach us here is that the baby must always be warm. They teach you how to feed the baby. If you're the mother who's breastfeeding the baby, 
so you have to take care make sure that he's warm it's a very great place for for the baby to grow up especially when he or she was born having problems like being sick because at the end of the day it's so sad to see that the other babies die you're starting losing, losing hope and being scared that maybe the, the, the baby is the next one. So if we want to address the problem of neonatal mortality, we need to start uh, in the pregnancy and early in the pregnancy. So we know that a lot of the mothers, they present too late. They're pregnant already for a long time and they only come to the, to the clinic when after so many months. And in, by that time, they could have all had some complications already that needed medical intervention. Some others are so small, 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 tiny. You know, it's scary to even take him, breastfeeding him. It's so scary because it's so tiny. It's like he will fall or something. <laughs> yeah. My baby is a sweet baby. <laughs> He's growing and we're being discharged today. We're going home. He's now 1,875. Is there anything else you'd like to say about? No, besides thanking the nurses and the doctors who are helping us, because if it wasn't for them, the babies who are being born in seven months, eight months, they won't survive, you see. I think the, the biggest thing there would be breastfeeding, breastfeeding, breastfeeding. South Africa has an appallingly low rate of breastfeeding. I think a lot of the issue came around the time of HIV, where there were poor messages fed to the community, where all of a sudden people were afraid to breastfeed because of the risk of transmission. And we actually saw an increase of deaths during that time. But with ARVs on board and better education of parents, we know that breastfeeding is safe for a mom who has a low viral load. And there's also a lot of false, um, I guess, ideas out in the community. People think that formula is superior to breast milk, where it just isn't. People think that purity is a good product as opposed to making fresh vegetables, fresh vegetable preparation yourself. So I think if we can overcome some of those obstacles, we would get better quality of food into the household. The most challenging part is the, 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 the resources, the resources, because without resources you can't, you can't work. That includes the, the material as well as human, even the, the consumables at times we don't have the consumables. And the community that we are saving, I must say this, the community that we are, we are saving, they are from a low socioeconomic status. So, there are a lot of challenges. So we expect a lot from the clinics. But unfortunately, in the current financial climate, we cannot offer them extra resources. So we're expecting more and more, but with the same resources. So it's, it's, it's tough. The clinics work extremely hard. I'm not sure if yourself have been to a clinic lately. Uh, maybe you're fortunate that you, that you don't have to go to a clinic, but if you go to a clinic, you, you wait hours and hours. Not because the clinic nurses are lazy, but because there, there, there is a mismatch between the resources and, and, and the people that, that need help. Uh, and also, a lot of the skills, so we invest a lot in training people, training occupational therapists, specialists, and when we have trained them, we struggle to keep them in the public sectors. But if you ask the people on the floor, they might blame management or they might blame the government because they want to deliver services, but they, they, they feel they don't have the resources. So I think if you talk to people on the ground, you might find the frustration. Let's go teach, come. Yeah, so this is Adam. 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 Yeah
ask the school to do this do the song work. Like something that she can do in the hospital and right that now she's still here like with us. Yeah. Like the book and the practices of the math and the practices of the writing, <coughs> the reading. She can do some school work. So to speak to the teacher, they can say a little bit of something like homework that she's learning in school. We was with her one time. But the number of the assistants is closed. Yeah, but then she has to cash up everything that she made. I think that makes Stenger a bit special. We try to. Within what we have, try to make it work, and if you can't have it, or if you don't have it, we try to motivate you. You need to be smart and opportunistic. So currently, if you're looking at a hospital setting, there's a patient rights charter that's a national document, but it's really geared towards adults and it speaks to the rights of adult patients. So what I did is I looked at those 12 standards of health care, um, I looked at the Children's Act, the current patient's rights charter, and I developed our own unique children's rights charter. We have the right to privacy. We have the right to be protected from any hurt. We have the right to a healthy diet. And remember, breast milk is best for us. Let's really make the hospital child friendly. You want children to be comfortable. You want them to be happy in this environment. And I think notoriously hospitals are a very scary place. They're quite clinical. There's scary walls, there's scary equipment everywhere. It really makes a child uneasy. So we've tried to find ways to make it more child friendly and to make it more inviting. And part of that is to bring a comfort item. Should the family not have one, uh, which they often don't come in with, we provide them with a soft toy uh, that they're allowed then to go home with. So this is Quiniso's little teddy, his little tiger. It'll stay with him for the duration of his admission and when he goes home, he gets to take it home just to bring a little bit of comfort and make the place less scary. So we're trying to introduce quiet times, but between certain times of the day, nothing will be done. No procedures, no examination, they're just left to rest in their beds. We developed a library that was also part of our Children's Rights Charter to try and stimulate. We are busy developing a food garden, so we're really trying these great new quality improvement projects to try and facilitate children's rights. Yeah, I enjoy this job. I've been doing it uh, from 1995. I enjoy it. I like working with children. Uh, I don't like working with adults. They are honest. They are honest. They don't complain. When they are sick, they are sick. When they are better, they jump out of the bed, they run. Then if you want to give medication, they'll say, no, I'm not sick, you know. So I like wearing, it's nice to work with them. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah, they are yeah, just honest. When they are sick, they are sick. When they are well, they are well. Unlike adults at times.
Mm. Yeah, on the day where you you had a, a, a serious resuscitation and you managed to save the life of that, you feel great. You feel you really feel great when you have saved life. Mm. 